I had no idea that putting sound deadening like this inside the cab of my truck could make me and my passengers sick. Now I know and now you know, but it's time to do something about it. Stick around. This kind of sound deadening that I put inside the cab of my truck is asphalt based. It's bad news because when the floor and the transmission tunnel get hot from the engine's exhaust, it gives off fumes and those fumes can be very, very harmful to your lungs. And this stuff can actually catch fire. And that's the last thing that we want. So I got to get it out of here. I found out by posting a video all about how I had come up with a solution that I thought was a really, really great idea. It was cheap, it was easy, it was fast, and I shared it with a whole bunch of people. 75,000 people saw this on Instagram. Got a little bit of a hack for you guys. If you wanna do some sound deadening and do it inexpensively, go to your local home improvement store, works great. At the time, I had no idea. So I ended up taking the video down. A company called Second Skin reached out to me and said, Flannel, if you're willing to take the nasty stuff out of your cab, we'll send you the proper stuff that you do want in your cab, but you can't leave this stuff in. You can't go over the top of it. You gotta rip it out. I hate doing work twice, but I got to. Some of you might be wondering, dude, why go with sound editing at all? You know, you're just adding weight to your car. Well, that is true. For me, I'm less concerned about the weight of this particular build. I wanted something primarily for a thermal barrier. That's why I was excited about the aluminized surface that this stuff had on it. The sound ending qualities were kind of a secondary benefit to me. I was primarily after the insulation factor and the fact that it's waterproof, so it's gonna keep out any water and moisture and things like that. To me, it was like killing three birds with one stone. This is room temperature right now. It's 62 degrees inside the shop. This stuff hangs on real tight. And you can tell, because it's asphalt, it's gonna fight every step of the way. I just pressed it down by hand, but... I fully expect it to probably peel off the paint that I had painted on the floor. I think I have a secret weapon. Second Skin actually gave me an email with a few helpful tips and tricks, and we're gonna try something that I've heard of working before, but this is gonna be my first time actually using it this way. Let's give it a shot, here we go. All right, so what we're dealing with is dry ice. And this is one of those things that I don't have a ton of experience with. I've done this maybe once or twice. So what I understand, and I could be wrong about this, but the idea is that by mixing these two ingredients, you're basically making liquid nitrogen and you're gonna contain it within the bags and be able to move the bags from one spot of the floor to another. The super cooling effect will make it so that you can basically smack this old peel and seal asphalt with a hammer, it'll shatter, and you can just vacuum up the pieces. That's the goal, that's what I'm hoping for. So we're gonna give it a shot. There's our dry ice. Whoa, cool, huh? Whoa! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Science! <laughs> I forgot not to seal it. I sealed it without even thinking about it. All right, so we're trying to kind of contain what's happening here. How cool is that? All right. Bag. I have three of the bags that have liquid in them, and then I have some more chunks that are just regular dry ice. I just want to start smacking and hitting with my mallet. That's at least helping the foil come off. Well, so far it's extremely frustrating and I'm discouraged because it's really, really slow progress. Oh. Not a huge fan of the alcohol liquid thing because it's really just making a big mess of things. And the best results that I've been getting is when I put dry ice directly on the asphalt after the foil has been pulled back. So lay some out, pull the foil, and then lay out some more, smack it with a hammer, and that's when the asphalt is coming up in nice, good-sized chunks. And there we have it. This is what I scraped and scraped and scraped to get off. So lesson learned, don't do what I did. So now that I've gotten the nasty peel and seal asphalt stuff taken out of the interior of my truck, 
Let's talk a little bit about what I'm going to be installing instead. Second Skin reached out to me and they're like, our stuff is made in the United States of America. It's family owned business, run by veterans. It's got the highest safety rating, not only automotive, but marine, rail. It's self extinguishing and it doesn't give off harmful gases when it gets hot. They said, tell you what, we're gonna send you some of our stuff, give ours a try, but you gotta get that old nasty peel and seal out of your cab. So I said, all right, you got yourself a deal. So here it is, I'm actually gonna be opening up and unboxing it with you right now. I have not seen this stuff. One of the other features about Second Skin Audio is their adhesion is supposed to be some of the best stuff out there. So this is the Pro Pack. Okay, I'm gonna open it with a sharp object. So this is kind of cool because you guys are seeing it for the first time just like I am. Oh, that is super cool. Check that out. I love that it's got their logo. I love the finish. That's really, really beautiful. So check this out. I'm gonna peel that back just a little bit. There's our adhesive, there's the butyl, not asphalt, and then we have oil layer there. Let's open uh, the second box here that they sent me. Oh, check that out. That is awesome. Foil on the front and the back. Okay, some installation tools. So I should have absolutely everything here that I need in order to properly do the installation of sound deadening. So I'm gonna start by just sort of planning out where I want my sheets to go in whole pieces before I have to make any trimming and things like that. This is gonna be awesome. Here we go. All right, definitely wanna wear some gloves because the edges of this stuff can be really sharp. You can get a paper cut. So start by pressing it in just with my hand, running the heel of my palm across it back and forth, getting it down into every single groove that I possibly can. It might make for a cleaner install if I didn't overlap anywhere at all, but I actually am allowing myself a little bit of an overlap on the edge. Not a lot. They did give me a wooden roller tool, so I'm using that in some of these really small spots. And if it looks like I'm gonna get a bubble or a wrinkle where I don't want it, I'll stop and I might cut a slit in it or something like that that might help out to make it lay that much nicer for cleaner install. One of the things that I decided uh, as I'm starting to lay some of this on the tunnel and along by the doors and things like that is I'm gonna cut it the long way on a few pieces. So it's 12 inches wide, I'm just finding center. It cuts really, really easy with like a heavy scissors. So I figured, you know, that's gonna make things a little bit easier and lay in there. And there's gonna be some overlap in some spots, but this stuff is laying so nice. Even when there's a wider overlap, you almost can't tell where the seams are at. It's beautiful. It looks really, really good. Yeah, I gotta say, I'm happy with how everything is adhering to the floor. I've found that using a rubber mallet in certain spots seems to really help kind of mush it in and get, get it in some of those really tight spots. And of course the roller works for the flatter areas. But yeah, all in all, it's going really well. And uh, I'm far from a professional installer, but if I can do this, I'm just a normal dude that works on his own stuff. You definitely can too. Man, I'm sure glad that that part of the project is over with. That was no fun scraping all this stuff off my floor. But truth is, my family and I should not be breathing the gases that come off this tar and asphalt when the floors of the truck get hot. Plus, it's flammable, so it belongs in the trash. Second skin is not flammable. That's one of the things that I thought was really impressive about it. It's actually self-extinguishing. Made in the United States of America, it's family owned, it's run by veterans, and they have the highest safety ratings. It's really easy to work with, with the adhesive, and got that foil backing on it, so it's got the thermal barrier to it. Yeah, stuff is awesome. So if you guys are in the market for sound deadening yourselves, Go check out Second Skin. They do a lot of audio sound deadening, not only in automotive, but home and office and things like that as well. This stuff was awesome to work with. They have a whole bunch of different products on their website, so go check them out. I'm gonna put down here in the corner of the screen how much weight I actually added to my truck because I weighed the box of product before, and now I'm gonna weigh the product again after what I have left over, okay? And that's gonna tell me how much I installed. If you guys enjoy this kind of content, you know what to do. You don't need me to beg you for it, but thanks for coming along. And I'm gonna get busy with seats and seat belts and move on to putting the box on this thing and finally get this project wrapped up. So if you enjoyed that video, make sure you like and subscribe for more content relating to soundproofing, sound deadening, and temperature insulation. And be sure to head over to secondskinaudio.com to get your sound and temperature problems solved.